Hey friends, I'm so excited to be here on the Hay House page talking about one of my favorite topics. So first a little about me. My name is Kelly Notaris. I am a book editor. I've been a book editor for 20 years and being a book editor, I have worked with a lot of authors, a lot of folks who have had a book dream in their hearts, primarily people who are interested in writing what I call transformational nonfiction. So transformational nonfiction to me means books that are meant to help the world, books that are going to change hearts and lives. They're going to help people heal and grow and make new choices in their lives that are going to get them more of what they want. That is my personal passion. So that's the books that I work on most frequently. And those authors are the most passionate. It's, I'm gonna say you authors, because anyone who's watching this video is very likely somebody who has a book dream in your heart. Somebody who is wanting to put your wisdom or your story out in the world. Oh, it's so nice to see people starting to watch. Hi, Alina. Um, so I, I, this is my passion and, and what I'm here for today is to talk to you guys about what gets in the way of even the most passionate authors, even the folks, hi from Denmark, hi everybody, um, even the folks who have that book dream that is burning because it is part of their purpose, it's part of what they're here to do. They, we, you still run into the number one roadblock, which is finding the time to actually write the book. So if any of you who are watching this uh, resonate with that and it actually is something that you struggle with, please let us know <laughs> because I feel like it's it's something that many authors hold as being a little shameful, right? Like, oh my gosh, I have this book I'm supposed to be writing and yet I haven't made the time in my schedule. I haven't sat down and gotten started with it. And to me, that doesn't need to be something that any of us are ashamed of. Hi, Annie. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, it's not something for any of us to be ashamed of. It literally is part of the writer's journey. So if you are struggling to find the time, I want you to know that that is one of the signs I take that you're actually a writer. Writers are um, oftentimes struggling to find the time in our schedules to write. And as somebody who has written my own book, which is coming out in November, it's called The Book You Were Born to Write, Everything You Need to Finally Get Your Wisdom Onto the Page and Into the World. Um, that book is meant to help overcome this hurdle. <laughs> yes, I totally hear you, Joni. Um, we're gonna talk all about that. Yes, where, where does our energy go in our lives? Is it going to places that are not our writing journey? Um, for me, I have a company, it's called KN Literary Arts, and I have a very busy and full life. And when it was time for me to write my book, and it really did feel like, I don't know what happened, like I got touched and it was just, you have to write this book now, people need the information that you have. I thought, how on earth am I gonna fit this into my world right now? And so I followed the tips that I'm gonna give you today. So these are tips that I have actually come to see work for people because I've been working with authors for 20 years and also because they actually worked you know, for me <laughs> in my writing of my book. Um, so the very first one, I hope this isn't a downer. Um, it's more like you guys already know this. You have to prioritize writing. I know it's not the message most people want to hear because we have so many competing priorities. And as I said earlier in the video, there's no shame in that. We are living in a time where there are a lot of things going on and we have commitments to family. We have commitments to our day job. We have commitments to community, um, to our home, to our, um, you know, just our livelihood. We have so many other things going on. And yet, if you're going to write a book, it's going to take what my, one of my favorite authors, Anne Lamott, calls butt in chair time. Butt in chair time. <laughs> that is what it takes to write a book. You have to actually sit down and write the book, right? And so we have to figure out what are the trade-offs that we are willing to make in exchange for our writing time because there will be trade-offs. Nobody, even writers, you know, the biggest writers that you know and love, they have to set aside certain parts of their life and business during the time they're writing their book. So one of the tips I wanna tell you uh, is actually 
I was watching one of the videos on this, this Facebook page um, where Louise Hay talks about not scaring yourself. <laughs> and I think that's such a good tip is don't scare yourself out of writing your book. Don't scare yourself into believing that you have to write it all today. Nobody writes it all today. And also don't scare yourself into believing that writing the book is something you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. You're not. Ideally, there is a, let's say, four to six to 10 month period, depending on what your life is like, during which you're gonna have a crunch in your life because you're getting this book out in the world. It's just the way it happens. I was actually writing my book this time last year and I had to set aside some really important things to me. I'm gonna be honest with you and tell you that I had to set aside some of my spiritual practice. I had to set aside exercise? I know. Who sets aside exercise? But I had to. The thing was, I knew that it was only going to be for a period of time. It actually took me five months to write my book. And I knew that once the book was done, I would pick those things back up again. Like any practice that we have in our lives, whether it's exercise or meditation or um, whatever your, your favorite practices are, sometimes they fit really well into our lives and other times they don't. And when you are writing your book, you're going to have to fit in writing your book. <laughs> you're going to have to make a trade-off. It's just like then, so when I said this is a little bit of a downer, it's it sort of goes against our cultural idea that you can do everything and you don't need to let anything go. And the truth is I have just worked in the trenches with authors for 20 years and I can tell you, you are going to have to let something go. Something is going to have to get um, pushed to the side or just tabled for now during the period that you're writing your book. But I want to one more time say, you're not gonna be writing your book forever. This is not a forever thing, at least I hope you're not. I hope you're not because we need your wisdom, right? We need what you have to offer. We need you to be um, putting that book in the world. So I'm just gonna give you some easy ideas of places where maybe you could let go a little bit. Um, thank you, Gail. It is simple, it's very simple. This is the hard part is that things that are simple sometimes are not easy. And I'm not even coming to you saying that this is easy. Writing a book is not an easy thing to do because we have so many other things vying for our attention. And it's a long-term goal. Writing a book is something that requires, as a teacher of mine once told me, a million tiny good decisions. Okay, a million tiny good decisions taken every day. Am I gonna sit down and write today or not? Am I gonna do my writing or am I going to, and here's some of the easy things we can sort of ask you, like, are you doing this? Watch TV, right? So many of us, I'm not saying that watching TV is bad. I actually enjoy a binge watch every now and then. Um, but when you look at the statistics of how much time Americans um, particularly spend watching TV, it's a lot. <laughs> it's like three to five hours a day on average. So I imagine that most of you who are watching this video aren't watching that much TV, but maybe you're watching three to five hours a week. And maybe if you spread out those hours over the course of the week and watched and w wrote for an hour a day, instead of watching that TV, something would be generated. I, I often say that if you write one page a day, you have an entire book in a year. And you might not want to wait that long to write your book, but that is the, the way to do it um, without having to give up too much else on your plate, is to write a tiny little bit every day. But as I said, I think most of you are probably wanting to get a book out in the world faster than that. And if that's the case, you're going to have to find something that you're going to replace, right? So I don't know what it is in your life. In my life, I have a writing practice every morning. I get up, get my tea, go to my computer first thing. And that's when I'm in a, a writing tunnel, let's say. So this time last year when I was writing the book you were born to write, I was in a writing tunnel. I got up every day at six in the morning and I went to the coffee shop and I wrote. That's what I did every single day. Right now I'm in a tunnel because my book is coming out. So I'm doing a lot of writing for um, our promotion and our book launch and I get up every day. Yesterday I got up, had my tea, wrote. This morning I got up, had my tea, and wrote. <laughs> Tomorrow morning I will get up, have my tea, and write. So I have, I've, I've actually set aside certain things in my life to be able to do that. And I do have the luxury of being able to write in the morning. Um, I also actually really like writing between the hours of 4 and 6 p.m. For some reason that works for me. So finding the time that works best for you and then displacing things for now that are not as much a priority as writing that book. Okay, that's the first tip I wanna talk about. 
The second one is setting writing goals for yourself. And I'm gonna bring Lou Louise back in and say, um, awesome, thank you, Annie. Um, I'm gonna bring Louise back in and say, we don't have to scare ourselves, right? There's no need to scare yourself into um, a writing goal that is actually outside of what the range is for you and your life. So I, I've worked with a lot of authors. I would really like there to be a one size fits all answer to having writing goals, but as, the fact that is that I've worked with so many people, I can tell you that some people are really process oriented. I am one of those people. For me, I create an outline that is like ironclad. It's very clear. I have chapter headings and then I have multiple subheadings under each chapter. And a goal for me when I was writing my book was that I wanted to draft about half of one of those subheadings every day that I sat at the coffee shop and wrote. So to me, I knew that that was going to be a reasonable goal that I could reach. It, it, it fit within the time frame that I had. And I knew exactly which piece I wanted to write because I'm a very organized author. <laughs> and not all of you are going to be. And I want to just honor that. Everybody has their own writing process. And some people are very organized and other people are not. And so if you're not somebody who can write from an outline, and maybe you're even in the process of just figuring out what it is that you want to write about, you can, you're welcome, Pamela. Um, you can write, uh, you can choose a, a more um, open-ended goal. So rather than saying, I'm going to write this information right now, you can say, I'm going to write this many words every day. And maybe for you, it's 200. You know, 200 words is not, yes, Gail, I am going to be at the writer's workshop in November for sure. I will be in the front row and I would love to meet you. Um, I'll be speaking there at uh, the, the Hay House Writer's Workshop Las Vegas in November. Great. Hope to see you there. Um, so you may, you may only have room for 200 words a day. And if that is what you have room for, awesome. Good for you. Write those 200 words a day. Some somebody who has a little more time, who's able to give an hour to two hours, maybe your goal is a thousand words a day. Keeping in mind that a word count goal is not a final edited paragraph goal, right? You, this is one of my main tips that I give all of my authors. Do not edit while you write. It is so hard to not but you've got to put a moratorium on editing because it takes time away from writing and it's, it manages to generate a certain amount of anxiety about not doing a good enough job. And that is the last thing that I want you to feel in the writing phase. In the writing phase of your journey, you just need to be writing. That is what you need to be doing, not editing. So in the book, You Were Born to Write, I have an entire section, the middle, the part two of the book is all about the writing process. And it is they're not about the editing process until the last chapter. And that is after you have a first draft, okay? So really, really important. Don't put yourself in the experience of feeling bad about your writing by going back to edit it. It's just, it's a, it's a great way that resistance shows up to keep you from meeting your goals. So set a word count goal if you need a more open-ended goal. Another open-ended goal is to set a timed goal. And I know that Nancy Levin, who's one of my dear friends, spoke yesterday. Um, and you can go back and find her video about timed writing. And I think that's an excellent example of a way to get writing every day is to say, oh, you're welcome, Carol. Awesome. Great. Yay. I'm so happy you guys are getting what you need. Um, so it's a great way to have a bite-sized goal to just say, I'm going to write for 15 minutes. And again, I keep going back. This is Louise is really inspiring me today. Don't scare yourself. Don't tell yourself you have to write for three hours. Like if you're not somebody who's in the practice of writing, you're not going to be able to sit down and write for three hours. And you know, a lot of people feel like they need to set aside, you know, three months and do, and, and, you know, quit their job and, and devote all of their time and energy to writing. And I'm telling you, that is just going to, that's a great way to never get your book done. Okay. Until you are in, in the practice of writing until you know yourself. And so this is one thing that I wanted to talk about today that's really important to me. Writing a book is a way that you will learn who you are. Because any difficult accomplishment that we take the time and give ourselves over to teaches us who we are. And I'm getting chills even as I say this because it's so meaningful to me in the process of writing my book last year, I learned what I'm capable of. 
And I've been an editor for a really long time and I have cheered from the sidelines for literally hundreds of authors. But, and I've written books before as a collaborative writer but I'd never written my own book. And I, it's, it's different when you're not having somebody pay you to write the book, you're writing it for yourself. Oh my gosh, it, it taught me my own capacity for dedication to what I wanted and what was important to me and my creative writing goals. And I want that for you because it becomes the making of us. When we, when we have, whatever the call is, and, and most of you who are watching this video, the call is writing a book, but for other people, it might be something else. It could be parenting. I just bow down at the feet of the parents who are watching this. That is, the, it's a similar thing. Writing a book is a birth. And you're birthing a book, but more importantly, I have come to believe you're birthing yourself. You are birthing the next version of you, the version of you that had the dedication and the passion, heard the call and followed it. There are not very many people who actually know what they are capable of. And if you write a book, you will know. So I really want that for you. And it's a million tiny good decisions, one after the next, taken every day. It's not something you can swallow whole. Although, now I'm gonna take a little pause to give a PSA, um, there are some shortcuts. There are shortcuts that are available and one of them I'm actually gonna be talking about next week with Reed Tracy, the amazing CEO of Hay House, who's basically the smartest man in publishing. And he is, he, he and I are gonna be teaching a workshop on Wednesday, um, October 17th. And you can find it there in the, the link, there's a link to it at the bottom of this, um, or to the writer's studio where all the information will be at the, at the bottom and the information under this video. We are gonna be teaching a class we're calling How to Write a Book in a Weekend. Okay, so there's a little wink in that title because of course, it takes many, many, many hours to sit down and write a book, and it's not possible to actually write it by hand over the course of a weekend, but there, there is a way that you can get a bunch of your content on the page in one weekend, and we're gonna talk about that. So Wednesday, October 17th, it would be great if you wanted to join as a video seminar, it's free. Um, so back to the, the, the task at hand, it does take a long time to get a book out. So we have to start seeing things in a different light. It can't be that we look at them, hi Andrea, that we look at them and we see only you know, short-term goals. We have to actually start learning how to see long-term goals because a book is a long-term goal. However, it comes in short writing goals one at a time, a daily writing goal, maybe it's a weekly writing goal. Which brings me to the last tip that I wanna talk about today which is that, hey, look at us, we're here on Facebook Live. Um, many of you are part of the Hay House Writers Studio Facebook group, which you can join. Again, the link is in the, um, the information below. And, and we've seen how being in this together actually makes it so things happen. When we're, when we're by ourselves in a vacuum, it's harder to keep our goals. It's harder to make sure that we are um, staying true to our vision. It, when we have something that's called social accountability, everything gets easier. And this is something that I just really feel passionately about. And it's part of the reason why I started our the book studio, KN Literary Arts, so that we could help people have social accountability and work with other people on their path to getting their book out because it is just so effective. It makes it so much more likely that you're actually gonna write the book. So tip, my, my last tip is social accountability. Find a group of people who are supportive and also writing. So that's what's really important. You probably have a lot of supportive people in your life who are looking forward to seeing your book in the world and you know maybe you have family members, or you've got people you work with or clients that are really excited about it, but it's different when you're working with other people who are writing because you all know what's going on with each other. You all actually know how hard it can be. So my suggestion is to look for a group of people that wanna write together. And I've got a couple different places you can find this. A lot of times my clients say, well, I don't know anyone else who's writing. Like there's nobody that in my community is doing that. That's totally fine. You can find them other places. I've already seen people starting to organize in the Hay House uh, Writer Studio Facebook group. That's, that's, again, you can find the link below. I've already seen people say, hey, can we get together after this? Can we you know, have a group that we can support one another? 
start a writing circle. I call it a writing circle rather than a writer's group because I want to just really show that it's an interconnected experience where everyone is there and together you're forming this resilient net that you can all sort of rest into and writing goals become much easier to accomplish with that sort of net underneath you. Um, yeah, look at that, Sean, awesome. He's he's actually got a writer's group already in Atlanta. Awesome, that's so great. Um, and another place that I, I find it's really easy to either find a writing group or start one is on meetup.com. Some of you probably are familiar with that website. It's meetup, all one word, dot com. And just go in there and put in the town that you live in and see if there's a writer's group that's already happening in your town. And if not, then form one. Why not, right? You can actually post really easily on meetup.com. Tell them, you know, name what kind of books you would like people to be writing. Some people don't mind. It's like whatever book you want to write, great. Some people want to be working only with people who are writing nonfiction, for example, because you're all maybe even transformational nonfiction, you know, folks that have sort of a similar mindset. Or maybe you're just writing fiction and you want other people who are just novelists or just poets. That's fine. You can say whatever you would like and start gathering a tribe around you of people who really do want to support you in the writing goals. And if you have any part of you that kind of likes, um, really wants to go deep in social accountability, there is a really great app that you can download um, to your desktop and your phone, I believe, called keepthescore.co. And it's a shared scoreboard. And, you know, some people hate competition and, and feel like that's going to, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be competitive, but there's a way. Hi. Hi, Sherry. Nice to meet you. Um, there's there's a way that you can use it totally non-competitively just to stay accountable to one another. So you can each one have your little line in there and say, say like, did I write to my goal today? And each one of you can sort of support each other. If, if someone's not writing to their goal, how can you help them? When we help other people, we help ourselves. We all know that already. So um, social accountability works both ways. It's not just getting, receiving help, but it's also giving help. And that, that process together can really, you know, deepen your commitment because you have other people who are counting on you. All right, so those are my tips, tips from an editor to all of you for writing. I, I just wanna say one more time that writing a book is something that so few people actually accomplish, even though so many people wanna do it. And it's something that if you have that, that burning desire in your heart, I deeply believe that's because it's meant to be in the world. And I want that for you. I want it so much. And I actually believe in you. I really do. I have learned from working with authors for 20 years that if you want this, there's a reason for it and it goes beyond you, okay? So prioritize, set writing goals and have social accountability. And uh, and the, the sort of umbrella of this whole Facebook Live to my own surprise is don't scare yourself, <laughs> okay? As Louise Hay said, don't scare yourself. Your mind is both your, your best ally and your worst enemy. So make sure that you are telling yourself it's okay if we don't meet our writing goal today. I'm gonna do what I can. I'm gonna keep going and make sure that you're you're actually giving yourself the inner support that you need and that you would give to an, a friend who is also wanting to write a book. All right, so uh, that's my, my tips for today. I'm gonna be back on Thursday, same time, so 9 a.m. Pacific. I'll be back here on Facebook Live with more tips uh, from my 20 years of being a book editor. And then a week from tomorrow, Reed, Tracy, and I are going to be doing our seminar, How to Write a Book in a Weekend. I, there's going to be some really excellent information in there. And again, a, a shortcut, I'm not going to say it'll get you to the finish line without having to do any work. Writing a book is work, but it is uh, soul work. It's soul work. It is the work we were here to do. So um, please join us next Wednesday. You can find out all the information by heading over to the Hay House Writer Studio Group. The link is below. All right, friends, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. And today, happy writing.